And we're doing this. We are live simultaneously on two channels at once. Who said that? Oh, it's me. <laughs> All right. So my watch page is on and popping. That's good. All right. So I want to say hello to both my audiences. That's right. I've got more than one audience tonight. So I want to say hello to the Jake the asshole audience first. Hi guys, how are all of you? And then I'd like to say hello to the Spheerage Gotis parody videos audience as well. Hi guys, how are you? And for those of you watching on one channel that might not be aware of the other channel, it goes like this. I started the Jake the asshole channel as Flat Earth Asshole back in 2016, and then it morphed into Jake the Asshole. And then uh, in 2022, I started, or 2021, I started a, a parody channel of a guy called Spheerage, where I make fun of him, and that's a side channel. And so uh, people who are unaware that I have multiple channels, tonight I'm going to Unite them all as one, as best I can. When I tell the tale, the psychotic saga of Spheerage, welcome both audiences. And these are two separate audiences. It's, it's, it's like uh, an entirely different thing going on over there at the Spheerage Gotis parody videos channel, where I expose this one guy who's so damn hypocritical, so damn psychotic, such a piece of shit that it just makes me feel really good to expose him. And I've been putting it off to where I need to explain to everyone on the Jake the Asshole channel who this guy is so that I can catch everyone up, get everyone on the same page. And it's going to take me a few hours to go over all the material and catch you guys up. And so for those of you who know who Spearage is. This is a, uh, a a review of who he is. And for those of you who don't know who he is, uh, you're going to find out uh, there's a guy right now wanted for hiring hitmen to try and kill his ex-girlfriend and his own innocent infant son. <laughs> and he's on the run right now, but still uploading videos to YouTube while hiding out in God knows what country. So hopefully the more eyeballs we have on it, uh, he'll eventually get caught, which is what everyone who watches him, who hates him, is hoping all, we're all collectively hoping happens. So, holy crap, let's get started uh, after I say my hellos to everyone. Andy's here, she says, he's the raw meat guy. Yes, so he's the guy that helped make... Uh, eating raw meat popular, but he is not the first person to go on camera and eat raw meat, but he did make it popular. All right. We got after the fact Zach here, guys, we, we have the after the fact Zach Hubbard here in the flesh. He gives great advice like uh, bet on both teams on the money line. Congrats to the winners. Gotta love it. Leslie Guy's here. She says hi. Hi, Leslie Guy. What's going on? Roger Smith here says, hey, Jake. Uh, Chad Wellington says, hey, this is random talking about Spearage. Oh, well, he's wanted for hiring hitmen to throw acid in his ex-girlfriend's face, and she's been scarred and permanently disfigured. And then he hired more hitmen to throw a Molotov cocktail through his son's window, and it burnt down her place, but they weren't home, luckily. So the hitmen were caught, gave him up, and so he's 
currently on the run internationally. And the story uh, is gaining uh, more and more headlines and people are starting to talk about it basically more and more. And so, uh, yeah, basically all the evidence is there. So I can show you like security footage of the girl being attacked. Uh, we got uh, pictures of her injuries. We got uh, pictures of the place burnt down. Uh, the whole, uh, her admitting it, a uh, whole shebang. It's, uh, it's the craziest saga on the internet. And uh, I've been following it for years before it even happened. So I was following this uh, YouTuber who I liked at first. And then he scammed his audience, became an e-beggar and a grifter. And then I started to not like him anymore. And then after he beat up his girlfriend and claimed it was muggers, we're going to get to all this stuff. Uh, I stopped liking him. And uh, at one point, I started a channel to uh, do parodies of him and troll him. And then that channel started to become popular. And now it has an audience of its own. And sometimes those videos get thousands and thousands of views of me just exposing one guy. So tonight, I'm going to try and catch everyone up. Those who know all about him, it's going to be a catch-up session. And then for those of you who've never heard of this guy, you're going to hear some twisted shit. All right? Some shit like you would not believe, but all the receipts are there. And this isn't just like random speculation. I can actually show you uh, good evidence for all of it. And uh, the fact that he refuses to address any of it. And if you go ask him about it, you'll be instantly banned. Basically proves all this shit's true. <laughs> all right. So we got a bunch to get to tonight. So, uh, we're going to strap in and uh, watch a bunch of video tonight. It's going to be a lot of video watching and reacting. And uh, it's going to quickly catch us up without me having to be the one to go over all the details. I found some good documentary video footage. And we'll start there. Life is ecstasy. I'm always on ecstasy. Got gotcha. All right, I got a super chat come in here from Painkiller. It says, get him, Jake. He needs to be held accountable. Exactly. That's why I, uh, I do this. Uh, people have asked, like, why are you obsessed with this guy that you started a parody channel just for one guy? It's like, because this one dude's a, a crazy psycho and he's uh, been accused of some uh, heinous shit. And now that the evidence has boiled to the top, it makes me feel good to expose him because that's what I do. I expose liars and scammers anyway. And so I felt like this guy, since uh, I was a fan of his uh, in the beginning, and then he morphed into such a terrible piece of shit over time that uh, I felt compelled to uh, be the one to help bring him down. And so that's what I'm doing, man. I'm holding him accountable and holding his feet to the flame. And away we go. Gatus Logsdens, known by his YouTube alias Sferia or Sferage, is a man best known for his promotion of eating raw meat and his aggressive criticism of conventional diets and especially veganism. A closer look, however, reveals that his diet is not his only unorthodox conviction and is only one of many manifestations of his extremely antisocial temperament. Gatis was born in Ventspils, Latvia on November the 27th of 1989. Besides his birth date, 
Not much is known about his early childhood, as it's rare for him to speak about his past. He was very active on the internet in his teens, however, and what little is known about these years mostly comes from the vestiges of abandoned internet forums and his YouTube channel. In 2006, a 16-year-old Gatis brought two knives to high school and stabbed four of his classmates. Due to his age, he was kept anonymous in news reports at the time, and for a period it remained only a rumor that Gatis was the student referenced in these articles. In 2019, Metro reporter Joe Roberts got in contact with Parsla Copemain, the headmistress of Ventsville's Gymnasium No. 1, and she confirmed that Gatis was in fact the perpetrator of the 2006 stabbing spree. Okay, so when he was uh, in high school, he stabbed four classmates. So that was the first psychotic thing he did. And see, uh, that was stuff that like we didn't hear about until many, many years later. And so uh, all the, uh, the initial signs of a deranged psychopath are there. This was just stuff none of us knew when we first started watching this guy or when f people first hear of this guy. They don't know that when he was in high school, he stabbed four people. And so that's basically what this is about, is teaching people who this guy is. So anyone new to him will get the full story right away. And right away, he stabbed four people in high school. Uh, thank you for the donation, SGD, uh, SG. The Galvez, I appreciate that. No message, just a donation. When detained by the police, God has claimed that he had been imitating a movie when he stabbed the four students. He didn't specify which, but it's possible that the film in question is 1991's A Brighter Summer Day a coming-of-age film that Gattis has praised and used as the source of his profile picture on several of his social media accounts. Around the same time as the stabbing, I got a super chat come in. It says, do you still eat raw meat, Jakey boy? Uh, sometimes, yeah. But I also like cooked meat. So I am a big fan of meat uh, in general. And I like pork, and I like chicken, and I like beef, and I like uh, lamb, uh, you, you name it, you know, sushi, uh, seafood, whatever, man. Uh, I'm a big fan of meat and protein, and uh, yes, I have tried raw meat. There's videos of me eating raw meat, and uh, I don't eat it uh, all the time raw because I like the taste of cooked meat as well. But uh, there's plenty of examples of me eating raw meat, and uh, it never has made me sick. So I am not against eating raw meat at all. And uh, in fact, there were people before this guy who made the diet popular, such as Ajunas van der Planets, which he basically copied and ripped off. So, uh, and there's restaurants uh, that are going to charge you an arm and a leg for uh, steak tartare, where they're going to serve you some raw beef. So the fanciest restaurants in France are going to serve you steak tartare and uh, have someone prepare it for you by hand, like uh, at your table. And so uh, they're not going to serve a fancy dish like that that's immediately going to make you keel over and die. So if anyone thinks that like eating raw meat equals like uh, being unhealthy or getting sick, uh, no, that's not the case. But all right, let's get back on track because it's not his diet, which I don't like. I like the diet that he at least promoted at the beginning. Uh, it's all the other stuff that he did. And we're about to get to that. <clears throat> Gottes molested a girl by grabbing her genitals while she slept. He admitted this in a video posted to his YouTube channel in 2014. I remember uh, when I was 16, I uh, tried to touch uh, a girl's uh, 
genitals, her breasts, her face, and her whole body when she was asleep. And she was drunk, I was drunk. And uh, that was when I went after my these physical ideas. In 2007, the year after the stabbing spree, Gattis would experience his first taste of internet popularity when he started posting videos online of himself playing a multiplayer role-playing game called RuneScape. He would post these Okay, so he admitted that he touched a girl inappropriately <clears throat> while she was sleeping. And so he admits to that. And so stabbed his classmates, touches girl inappropriately while she sleeps. Uh, what a hell of a guy. And we're, we're just getting started. <laughs> videos on the RuneScape Classic forums under the name Kids Range, which were then uploaded to YouTube by another member. Eventually, he started uploading them himself on his own channel, but after his RuneScape account was repeatedly hacked, he decided to stop uploading videos. So these are rest videos I posted on my account, Kids Range and so zoned are the reasons it says that I have so many video views. At this time, he started his own IRC channel, which was an early internet chat room system similar to popular apps like Discord. Due to the nature of IRC, most of the chat logs are no longer available. In May of 2008, Gattis started his first full-time job in Latvia, and soon after moved to Yorkshire, England. Gattis later had his YouTube channel hacked and had all of his videos removed. At this time, he started uploading music across multiple YouTube channels to avoid copyright strikes. After two years in England, he moved to Berlin, Germany. In 2012, Gata started regularly uploading to his YouTube channel again. He would film himself outdoors and talk about conspiracies, philosophy, entertainment, and other topics that interest to him. It's finally here. But all of you have been waiting for. We made a forum. The basic uh, point is uh, to have a forum where you don't get censored, where you don't get laughed at, where you can. Over time, he became more and more convinced that it was the only proper diet, and his critiques of anything outside of raw meat became more aggressive. Vegetarianism is what started veganism. So don't you ever fucking message me believing that I have any respect for you. Vegetarians are absolute scum. By the end of 2016, Gattis was consistently posting almost exclusively about health and nutrition related topics. He also added rotten meat to his diet. Some refer to it as high meat, as the fermented meat supposedly gives you an intoxicated feeling after being ingested. Hi guys, my high meat is one year old now, so I'm gonna eat it all at once. Smells like acidic mushrooms. Okay, I have not tried that and I don't want to try that. So I did try eating raw meat, and raw beef is good. Uh, putting meat in a jar and letting it rot like that, dude, I just don't even want to try it. So there's people that talk about how it makes you feel great and it's so wonderful, and I'm just like, no thanks, dude. I'll feel great and wonderful without that. <laughs> so that's not one that I have tried, and uh, I just don't feel like trying. So we're going to jump ahead a bit now. So he built this YouTube audience on uh, eating meat and rotten meat and going to vegan festivals and eating meat uh, at vegan festivals in front of vegans and triggering them. 
And so that's how a lot of people discovered him is through uh, him triggering vegans and then those videos going viral. So his most viral videos are of him eating meat at vegan festivals. But then he pulled his uh, his first like uh, scam on his audience uh, around this time. He was uh, he had a girlfriend who was like uh, special needs, we'll say. And uh, he was being paid basically as a caretaker to be with this girl. And uh, so when he broke up with her for a different girl, uh, he lost his funding. And so he started to beg his audience. So this is the first example of him becoming an e-beggar. And it gets way worse from here. Video like this and actually can stand videos like this when people make them, but I'm in a situation where I got to do it. I, I pretty much can't afford this diet anymore because I don't get the money anymore because I met somebody else and uh, I chose her over everything else. Only a few months after he had started dating Luna, God has posted a now deleted video claiming that Luna had been mugged by immigrants while walking through a forest in Berlin. Luna is in this video with a visible black eye. I'll get you. Okay, so he basically begged his audience for money because he broke up with his special needs girlfriend. And the special needs girlfriend had a parent who was rich who would pay him to be the caretaker boyfriend. And so when he broke up with that girl, he lost his funding. So then he immediately begged his audience because he met this girl, Luna, and started uh, going out with her. And so then he started e-begging because he couldn't afford his diet without assistance from his subscribers. And so within uh, a few months, several months of him dating this girl Luna here, who you see on the right, he tells this story that muggers beat up Luna and he needs money to fix her face. Put two and two together, what you think happened to Luna's face? right to the point my girlfriend luna she was mugged yesterday in this fucking shit city i wouldn't even make a video about it but her teeth are all chipped in at the top and the bottom because of the kick in the face we tried all kinds of raw food for healing even raw eggs they're pretty much liquid but she can't eat them because it hurts so fucking much so now we gotta get a fucking straw and somehow try to feed her some nutrition so she heals in some way it's just all fucked up Everything here is swollen. The nose is swollen. She already had problems with the nose. She had surgeries. So we don't know what's going to happen with that now. What did the doctor say at the hospital? Because you could die. And you couldn't even remember your phone number. Which is also fucked up. We definitely got to go to a dentist now because she can't eat anything. and. Uh, you know how expensive dentists are in Europe and uh, with the nose also. I appreciate all the support I get on Patreon, but that money pretty much pays for my food. That's about it. We both don't have a decent income for, to pay for any of this. So if anybody could support us in any way, even 5 to $10 on my PayPal, for example, that would really help us. Thank you if you decide to support us. He received $5,000 in fan donations, which he says he used towards flying out to Ukraine for a surgery. So that scam right there fleeced his audience five G's because he said muggers beat up Luna. And so uh, the girl Luna, when she met him initially, uh, she didn't know that he had stabbed his classmates and stuff like that. See, she initially saw him as the raw meat guy who was popular and traveling around. And then she went to one of his meetups and then they became a couple. And then shortly within them becoming a couple, this happened right here. Here's where she makes her big mistake. She stays with them, right? She could have ultimately avoided so much heartache and trouble if she just would have learned like, oh, yeah, I need to get the hell away from this guy and cut contact. But she stays with him. 
And as you'll see, uh, this tale gets more twisted. Th those of you who know, this tale gets super extra mega twisted. So this is just still the beginning. We haven't even reached uh, anywhere near the pinnacle yet. We got a lot to go. And so he fleeced his audience here for five G's over this little charade. And he claims it was muggers. <laughs> you know, because she went walking in Berlin uh, by herself without anyone. And of course, muggers did this if, when he wasn't around. <laughs> right. Uh, Rothgar says, thank you for documenting Spearage. He truly is a massive piece of shit. Don't forget he stabbed someone when he was in school. He's a grifter on every level. We started with that. So I've only been live for 25 minutes and we've only been covering this for like, I, mean, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And uh, uh, so I showed at the beginning where uh, he stabbed his, well, I didn't show him stabbing classmates, but I showed the news clip and then showed that it was connected back to him. And then I showed the clip that he admitted to inappropriately touching the girl while she slept. So now we have him claiming muggers beat up his girlfriend. And uh, shocker, uh, that's a lie. And thanks for the donation. I appreciate that. Many of Gottes' critics and ex-friends don't buy his story and think that he was the one who beat up his girlfriend, considering his history of antisocial and abusive behavior. A review left on Gottes' Airbnb profile while he was in the Ukraine lends support to the theory that Gottes lied about Luna's black eye. In this review, the host he stayed with accused him of being a noisy, messy, disrespectful guest, and in his response, got his mentions that his girlfriend hurt her face falling on the window of the Airbnb. It's unlikely that Luna got two black eyes on two different occasions within the span of only a few months. What probably happened is that God has told two different stories about how Luna got the black eye. A few months after Luna's injury, Gattis started a live stream titled 42,000 Subs Live Stream. Near the end of the stream, Gattis and Luna were getting on each other's nerves, Luna not wanting to be a part of the stream. Gattis kept pointing the camera at her to annoy her, so she left the room. Gattis then followed her into the hallway, and Luna brandished a knife and lunged at Gattis. <laughs> <laughs> okay in case anyone's confused a bit so the guy on screen is his name is gattis he has a channel currently which he uploads to called gotis he used to have a channel called spheridge with a three and that one got uh deleted by youtube it got taken down and uh, so he has like three names. So people know him as Spheridge, and most people call him Spheridge. His actual name is Gatis, G A T I S. But his channel name is Gotis, G O A T I S. So if you can keep any of that straight, he's got three names. And the guy talking in the video right now about him made a documentary, basically documenting and telling the story. And so I'm playing that rather than me have to tell you the whole damn story since he already made the documentary. I'm just going to stop every now and again and reemphasize or add on or, uh, you know, tell you any detail that he might have missed. Okay, Indigo Heart says, thank you for keeping this wannabe murderer on blast. Yes, see, he hires hitmen. He doesn't do the dirty work himself. But he's tried. As we'll find out, he does try. <clears throat> I still need my whole spit out of me. I'm so nervous for tomorrow. I'm going to do it like that. Why would you do that? Yeah, why do you interrupt the stream? Because you said, until crying. <laughs> 
In January of 2019, he and his girlfriend left to go on a trip to the USA, and when he made a video asking viewers in Phoenix to host him for free, no one was interested. It's been a week now, and I have nobody else there. From the 11th to the 12th, we want to do a real-life ex-vegan interview. That's my biggest problem, and this is why I really need a place to stay somewhere, until then at least. So if anybody could help us out, somewhere in Arizona, preferably around Phoenix, and we would be really thankful. Thank you. While he eventually found people who were willing to let him crash in a cramped room at their place, he felt entitled to be treated like a king and was not happy about the situation. He posted a video ranting about money and called his viewers scum, as well as insulting the entire state of Phoenix. Good morning. <laughs> I gotta make a video about this it's so fucking ridiculous what the fuck is wrong with people in phoenix arizona or arizona in general is it because you live in the desert that you're so fucking far removed from humanity and nature why don't you get a airbnb or a hotel if i had the fucking money for that then obviously i would do that even though it is nice to meet the subscribers and connect to them by staying at their place, but, but when I would need it, then I would do it. What the fucking fuck? If I want to come to Phoenix, then I expect you to drop everything that you are doing and to let me have a place to stay. Whenever I travel internationally, I make sure to not have enough money to have a place to stay and i expect all of my mentally ill slave scribers to of course let me sleep on the floor with my girlfriend as well luna and if you do not let us sleep on your floor then you are a stupid piece of shit and a fucking mentally ill scumbag slave and i don't want to fucking meet you that's basically his attitude in this video <laughs> he learned real quick that 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 doesn't get him over uh with his fans real well so he did this a few times where he would bitch but then he would take down the video and then pretend it never happened afterwards so these are all deleted videos that people like you know screen recorded and kept for safekeeping purposes such as now and uh it's fun that it comes back to haunt him because he doesn't try this shit anymore and now he doesn't want to meet any of his fans or slave scribers because he's on the run. But back then, he would basically call you a scumbag if you didn't sleep, let him sleep on the floor. <laughs> so how the fuck should I pay hundreds of dollars to stay at some place that doesn't doesn't work what the fuck do you not understand fuck <laughs> but that's not even the worst thing then there were people who said <laughs> do a subscriber meetup still are you gonna do a meetup more people said that why the fuck would i do a meetup and look into your egotistical fucking scum eyes and actually meet you. You let us down. I would never do that. I would never want to meet you ever. Fuck Phoenix and everybody who fucking lives there. <laughs> fucking people there. Fuck. And there's no, no excuse for this. I've stayed in a place that was... Uh, uh, Pretty much as big as these two squares there. That's it. Literally, I'm not joking. In San Francisco, that's kind of... Kind of how the apartments there are. That's what people said. You walk in, you turn around, and there's a bed. That's it. And still, three of us slept there. Why? Because she wanted us to sleep there i'm not gonna name who it is maybe she doesn't want to but the point is that there's always space there's absolutely no excuse and i've stayed with people with their parents their kids 
there's always a possibility. So obviously the people in Phoenix are totally fucked up. You're fucking scum. Of course, <laughs> I'm never gonna do a fucking meetup with you. Fuck. Fuck this fucking shit. Thanks for watching. Got his return to Europe only to be arrested shortly afterwards. This was during one of his vegan protest publicity stunts. Gata showed up at the Soho Vegan Market in London and began eating a raw squirrel while wearing a dead bird as a necklace. Okay, so one of his most viral videos is when he eats a raw squirrel at a vegan event. Uh, and this was in, uh, I think the UK. And, uh, so it was, uh, they asked, they asked him to leave and, uh, I guess he put up uh, some resistance or something, but he ended up getting uh, arrested. And, uh, so he never did serve his court trial in the UK. He just basically split, but, uh, this was the first video that like really blew up and I think went over a million views. So uh, a lot of people first found out about him because of him eating raw meat at the uh, vegan events. Showing once again, this is not a vote comment that we've spoken to the This is a dictatorship. Gattis was ordered to pay 700 pounds in fines and court fees, but he didn't show up to court and left the country. This happened just weeks after a previous protest in Manchester, where he had paint dumped on him by a vegan. Get it from there, yeah. Oh, fuck it. And here, a vegan dumps paint on his head, and he totally uh, acts like a beta male and doesn't do anything about it and just stands there with paint on his head. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy who dumps paint on his head isn't like some big scary mofro. It's like a dude that like you would figure that he could like maybe beat up or whatever, go confront him at least, but he doesn't do anything about it. So when a vegan does uh, actually assault him by dumping paint on his head, he doesn't do anything about it. At some point later in the year, God has posted a video of himself drinking blood out of a plastic vial. Got a package from Sweden. Hmm. What could it be? I wonder. Whoa. The color is nice. The elixir of life. This blood was sent to him by Ludwig, a fan that had been to meetups before and who had his own YouTube channel. I helped him with some things. I even sent him my fucking blood. <laughs> And he doesn't care at all. He's a heartless prick. Ludwig would later denounce Gattis as selfish after their friendship ended over an argument about the validity of the health benefits of saunas. If you would like it, then you would stay in it. So one of his fanboys sent him a vial of blood and then when Spheridge got it, he drank his sub's blood. And I found, there's another video I could show you of him drinking it. And he's like, oh, I fucking love this. This is so fucking good. <laughs> this <the> motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, it gets too hot because you're in an unnatural environment. <laughs> That's why you leave, because you hate it. Is it the autism or just stupid? <laughs> this is... 
At the end of the year, Gatis and Luna had a baby together. When his son was born in classic Gatis style, he refused to sign the paternity documents so that Luna could collect welfare money intended for single mothers. This would come back to bite him almost immediately as the couple's relationship began to fall apart mere months later. Firstly, if there's anybody out there who wants to join me, us, people who want to go get away from the system and if the second wave is super bad to escape into the wild, then uh, email me. We're kind of in the final stages of organizing it. In autumn of 2020, partially motivated by the coronavirus pandemic, Gatis, his girlfriend, and some of his followers decided to all live together in a so-called off-grid commune in Romania. So for this scam, he took in uh, money for an off-grid community in Romania, which turned out to just be like a house with like four rooms or something that was in a town. It wasn't even an off-grid anything at all. And then they just like, he just hung out and was on his laptop all day. <laughs> and so they just like lived, he lived with his subs. And then, of course, that starts, that relationship starts to deteriorate. So, of course, that's not going to work out. So, <laughs> ultimately, I don't want to spoil it, but uh, his girlfriend, Luna, uh, ends up cheating on him with a dude who lives at the house because the dude who lives at the house uh, speaks Dutch and Luna's from the Netherlands. So, she ends up cheating on him with a dude who lives in his commune. And then. It gets crazier from there. Gatis and his friends got an Airbnb where the rent was being split between the people living there. The group quickly fell apart and everyone left. YouTuber Frank Tufano got in contact with one of the members of the off-grid group to listen to what happened from his perspective and tells the story in a video posted to his YouTube channel. And I was actually able to get a hold of him and talk about his trip over there, you know, for about an hour, but he preferred not to be recorded in the video himself. You know, so I'll be translating that conversation. So the story starts with Sverage reaching out to Yamastili and asking him to stay at his place in Germany. Yamastili asked Sverage if Luna was coming and she wasn't, you know, which was a red flag, seemed odd considering they had just had a child together and were both living in the Netherlands together. After getting to know Sverige a bit more, <laughs> Yamastili decided that Sverige was a really weird guy. And from the get-go, Sverige was telling Yamastili things like Luna threatens him with a knife three weeks into their relationship, all sorts of really personal crazy stuff. Three days after Sverige came, Luna showed up with their baby, and Yamastili decided to go with Romania with them because, you know, of what was going on in the world. They arrive in their Airbnb in Romania. Sverige, Luna, Yamastili, as well as several others who had yet to arrive, agreed to split that monthly rent of around 900 euros. On the very first night, Yamastili wakes up to loud screaming, banging, and Luna had locked Sverige in a room and tells Yamastili not to let Sverige out because he would hit her. I mean, Yamastili opened the door, and then Luna and Sverige apparently screamed at each other for the rest of the night, leading to Luna crying. Now, Yamastili happened to speak Dutch, which was Luna's primary language, and Sverige doesn't actually speak Dutch, you know, so Luna started hanging out with Yamastili. And being by themselves in the house, you know, with the relationship friction, Luna started messaging Yamastili on her phone, kind of like warming up to him, even complimenting him. Luna kept going over to the guest house to hang out with Yamastili and chat with him every single day. So after a few days of this, the rest of the off-grid group shows up. Five more people, including a young child, join the house. To make it eight. So about two weeks into the trip, Luna was hanging out with Yamastili every day, 
even wanted to go on walks with him late at night around 11 p.m. Obviously, you know, Sverige noticed and wanted to kick them both out despite, you know, nothing personal happening. One night around that two week point, Luna messaged Yamastili asking if she could come over again. And before Yamastili even responded, you know, she was in his room. I mean, shortly after that, Sverid showed up. What the are you doing here? You're always with him. It was dark. None of their faces could really be made out. Luna started panicking, getting nervous. Sverage eventually saying, you guys both leave tonight or I break both of your noses. So Luna followed Sverage back to the main house, arguing back and forth with him. Yamastili was sort of relieved and happy that he had a reason to go. Uh, as even before this event occurred, you know, Yamastili was already calling up his friend in Turkey, seeing what he should do. Luna actually admitted that she was the one coming on to Yamastili. But Sverige was still angry because he expected Yamastili to tell him that himself. Then Sverige kicks out both Yamastili and Luna, told them to sleep in the family's RV, which is parked in the driveway of the Airbnb. And I mean, that doesn't really make any sense if he didn't want them together. Uh, the family ended up helping Yamastili and Luna, you know, driving them to the supermarket, to a hotel, the family saying, you know, don't worry, you know, when the month rent ends, we're going to find a solution together. Sverige then got mad at the family because of the family helping Yamastili and Luna, allegedly threatening the family with a knife and making them leave back your stuff. As expected, the family ends up leaving as well, but they had a hard time getting their money back from Sverige. I know it's a long story, but basically, uh, uh, Spheridge, uh, his off grid commune <laughs> blew up in his face and, uh, it did not go, uh, as he expected at all. And so basically Frankie just told the story and this is uh, Frank Tufano. I don't care for this guy. Uh, I don't really watch his channel, but he's a, another character that Spheridge has battled with in the past. So. Uh, he's the one retelling this story secondhand, but this has been confirmed through other sources. And so that's basically what did happen. Luna hooked up with this other dude, L Yamastili, and then Spheridge kicks both of them out uh, of the uh, commune. And then when the family tried to help Luna and Yamastili, then he gets mad at them. So then the commune went to shit. Uh, Yamastili didn't actually ask for his money back, and uh, then the two other German guys left. Uh, Yamastili ended up staying with Luna in the hotel for about a week, and we all know what happens in hotels. Uh, she was actually planning on going to Turkey with Yamastili, but Sverige lured her back in, you know, by threatening he was going to kill himself, and just typical narcissistic behavior. And after all that, they get back together because he threatens to off himself if she doesn't come back. So they get back together. Oh, who didn't see that one coming? All right. The dark web and make money from it. If you don't believe me, he also said this to another guy. I could confirm. So this was, this was actually... An idea, and he said how he would make money, and he made money in very messed up ways already. So obviously, after the rejection, he got really mad. We didn't get into a physical fight, but obviously there was a lot of tension. The family, oh yeah, they were very loud. So I was trying to, I had made this video, I was trying to edit it, and for two hours they were incredibly loud. So I go to them, they got mad at me, especially this one guy got really mad at me for telling them that they are too loud and I can't edit. I don't tell them. And then uh, Jerome, the Dutch guy, said, uh, and this is literally what he said. He said, she's the devil. I just didn't understand what he's really talking about. But I was also kind of blinded by the feelings. I was like four or five days into the meeting. He saw something in her. And I didn't talk about this because, um, uh, well, for whatever reason, there is just no reason for me to stop it. 
And uh, besides everything that she did to me for over two years, all the abuse. Uh... And uh, I have proof of that as well, by the way. I hope it's not. A major complaint of his was that Luna was making money off of her Patreon. Gatis likely saw this as taking eggs out of his basket, as her patrons were deciding to donate to her rather than him. He threatened that if people chose to donate to her, he would delete his YouTube channels. Luna then posted a recording on her Patreon account explaining the situation. Hello everyone, I'm very sad to make this post. Um, but I don't know how else to do it. But the problem is, Gatis is really not happy with me having a Patreon. Many people have said that they would want to watch me if I had a channel, uh, or that they just genuinely, genuinely want to to help out with me and baby, considering Gatis doesn't support us. Um, I could tell you way more about that too, but uh, I'm not going to. Um, point being is, he has threatened me and the baby if I keep it up. And uh, I have proof of that as well, by the way. I hope it's not necessary. That's, I don't know what I'm hoping for here, but uh, I also don't know why he cares. He already has a new girlfriend not even girlfriend, but a fiance, he's planning to marry someone already. And I, I can't be blackmailed anymore. And um, so if I do delete this Patreon, then you guys know why. I hope it's, I don't know. Like, I don't know what to do if I should or should not. Like in a way, like, I don't even know if it's worth it being threatened and living in fear because of this. But on the other hand, like, Okay, so that was Luna's testimony. So when they did break up, uh, she didn't have any uh, money coming in from him at all and uh, wasn't getting any support. And she was, uh, she made a Patreon and uh, was getting donations because people who watched the Spheridge channel were big fans of Luna, of course. And, uh, so she was part of the reason which his channel became popular. His views skyrocketed when Luna showed up. And so his relationship with Luna was a huge dynamic of the channel. So then when it ended and Luna created her own Patreon, it really infuriated him that she was getting money. And he told her that he would uh, basically kill her and the child if she didn't take it down. So he threatened her life over her getting money on Patreon. And she ultimately did take down the Patreon. And ultimately, he does still try and end her life. Like, you guys, I'm really, really thankful you're here to support me and my baby and... It really helps, like it really does. And uh, for the first time, I felt like I'm I'm doing something for myself. Yeah, and uh, I also looked forward to. Uh... So there's no confusion. Uh, he dated before Luna a girl who was like special needs, and so when he left that girl, he wasn't getting any money for being her caretaker boyfriend, basically from the rich parent and he left that girl for Luna. And so that's when the e-begging began is when he started his relationship with Luna. Luna actually, it, in my opinion, uh, she's a sweet girl and she's cute. It's, she just had really bad judgment uh, and picked a bad dude. And then when he had really terrible behavior with her, she didn't learn her lesson and cut the relationship off. She continued with him. And then it got to this twisted point where then there was a child involved and then he's making death threats. And so this is when shit starts to get really twisted. And so uh, did she make mistakes? Sure. But uh, I don't like to pin, you know, too much blame on the person who's uh, a victim in this situation.
So making more more content for you guys, like videos, pictures, or whatever, or yeah, just just so you know um, what's going on. The claim that Gatis had a new fiance came as a surprise, as he had dated Luna for over two years and never proposed, and now suddenly, only months after their breakup, had found a new woman that he wanted to marry. Eventually, Luna did end up deleting her Patreon, leaving a message for her supporters. After his fans kept asking him about Luna, he posted another video, this time public rather than a Patreon exclusive. In this video, he expands on his accusations from the live stream and further smears her with no proof. He also says that he has given up trying to pursue Luna legally to see his son. All right, I'm making this video just to shut you up, so to speak. I made a video in January. It's 30 minutes long. It's on my Patreon account. It explains everything. Now, if you're going to say you don't want to pay 15 bucks or you don't have 15 bucks to subscribe to my Patreon, then fuck off. If you have a phone, you have a laptop or you have internet, you have $15. Everybody does. doesn't matter if you're from India, China or whatever. It's, it's absolute bullshit. Anyway, bottom line here is, if you ask anything about uh, demon psycho, that's all I call Okay, you guys are talking about his hairline. He goes on, I don't want to spoil it, but he goes on to get a, it's either a hair system for men or a hair transplant. But then he, he won't tell his audience that he got a hair transplant or is wearing a wig. There's a debate now because he's wearing a wig nowadays or it's a hair transplant. And there's a debate in the uh, community that knows he's wearing a wig or a hair transplant, whether it's a wig or a hair transplant. So that part is an ongoing debate. But basically, he goes on to get a hairline tattoo. He shaves his head, gets a hairline tattoo, and then a wig. In my He starts gluing a, a wig to his head. And then he goes on to criticize men who are bald or have hairline issues and pretends that that's his real hair. I swear to God, we're going to get to it. So those of you who already know the spirit story, uh, you already know his wig and uh, hair system, hair transplant deal. Those of you who don't know and you're making comments about his head, he goes on to either get a hair transplant or a wig, but he pretends he grew it back naturally. And anyone who asks about it, he bans you. So if you ask him about Luna, he'll ban you. If you ask him about his hair, he'll ban you. Ask him about his son, he'll ban you. Ask him about Jake the asshole and he'll ban you. I swear to God, you call this guy about, call him out about anything, your comment disappears. It won't even go through. He's got a list of filters to where if you even say the word hair in your comment, it won't even show up. Oh, no, there's... Uh... For about my son and my uh, live streams, uh, you're getting blocked right away. Also, I'm telling this to all my moderators. Any questions about her or him, block right away from now on. This is like a warning video, basically. Okay, there's, this is it. The, the topic is just completely done on, on my channel. Well, I timed that perfectly because he just admitted that he bans you automatically if you ask a question about Luna. So you're not allowed to even ask a question. Yeah, ask about any of these things and it's banned. So he only lets his mentally ill subscribers comment as long as their comment doesn't, doesn't make him feel uncomfortable at all and is just talking about his video where he's criticizing other men. So he makes videos now where he criticizes other men's looks. He does. And so uh, any comment that's not about uh, him or promoting him gets banned immediately. Three, I was with three women after her and now I'm married to my dream girl. I. Yeah, that's my so-called future. That's all that I focus and think about. I never think about any exes. It's just, it's nothing to me. 
And uh, as I said uh, in the live stream that I did, uh, she's the worst human I've met in my life. But... Okay, so, um, and, uh, you know, I was getting, uh, after I made a video about her, she, she got incredibly mad, like, incredibly uh, pissed off the people, you know, basically found out what she did, so to speak. Uh, message called me all the time, every day, basically. I blocked every, I blocked her everywhere on every app or WhatsApp, Skype, numbers, everything. She got away around it, used different numbers. She emailed me on like five, ten different emails by the name of Flat Chest Luna. This channel started posting videos that only goddess would have access to. So then he started posting personal videos of Luna that he had and stuff and uh, making channels to like make her look bad and to harm her reputation. So he started doing some really shisty stuff like this channel that he created, Flat Chest Luna and then started uploading videos, just being a real piece of shit. And it was around this time that uh, I, I noticed a, an uprising against him on the internet. And uh, that's when like uh, everybody who was once his friend started to turn on him. So people who did follow him, by this point, almost all of his friends had turned on him and were against him. So he's basically lost all his old friends that he used to have. And he doesn't have any old friends anymore. Including a video of him filming Luna as she pulls up her skirt to reveal her underwear. And a video showing Luna's parents with their full names in the title of the video. Show it. Want to see my ass? Yeah. <laughs> Can I put this in the video? No. <laughs> <laughs> the title of the channel also suggests it was made by Gattis, as he had mentioned that one of the arguments he had with Luna was over him insulting her body, and he had mentioned in live streams that her breasts were too small for him. Something about uh, her body, basically, that I never liked, so to speak. What about the woman I had a child with? She had uh, two small breasts, so I had to leave her. It was always terrible. Gattis did not want public. Okay, so the very next chick that he dates, are you guys ready for this? A black chick. All right. So this next chick that he dates, her name is Jazz. She calls herself Jazz the Physicist. And uh, quite the difference in looks from Luna to Jazz. I'll let you guys be the judge. Like, especially in chat rooms like Discord. Here she is claiming that Gattis had planned to murder Luna if she didn't delete her Patreon, and that she was willing to be an accomplice. Keep in mind that everything she says should be taken with a grain of salt. This does, however, line up with a video that Gattis posted stating that he would be forced to come after Luna in the Netherlands if she didn't delete her Patreon. But I made a long post about uh, Luna and everything. I found out a day or two after that she actually didn't delete her Patreon, but only renamed it. So then I was thinking she's just not going to let it go because I thought that I really got to go to the Netherlands, especially after finding that out. And then all of a sudden, one day, the Patreon is deleted. And um, also the channel name of her YouTube account was changed and the discussion was removed. Jazz posted a video lamenting the fact that she felt she was being used, that he wouldn't allow her on live streams, and that Gattis didn't truly love her. It seems like Gattis had originally planned to use Jazz for her money and a car during his trip to the USA, as well as potentially marrying her for residency. I came on here to tell you guys the story of how we got together, but it's like, I don't know what the, I thought I had the energy to say it, but I'm just like too sad right now because I, I feel used and 
I know you guys will say, well, duh, you're being used. There's no way you can actually pull him or whatever, which is really fucked up to say to a person, right? That, like, I look a certain way so I can't get the man of my dreams or whatever. I, I just had hope in this relationship with him. I wanted the rumors about him to be false. I wanted him to be just some misunderstood guy that was looking for love that's what i always saw in him is like he wanted love and stuff and i don't want to be lied to and i just have this fucking feeling like i'm being lied to like he doesn't actually care about me like he doesn't like he's indifferent and that if i had nothing to offer him he would just leave i have a person that i'm with who was supposed to be the man of my fucking dreams right the guy that I was in love with forever many years. And I don't even trust him. Later that month, Gattas started a live stream with the title Severe Depression Livestream. In it, he talked about suffering depression because a girl that he wanted to be with left him after an argument. Jasmine confirmed that he wasn't referring to her in a comment on her YouTube channel. Jazz then uploaded an angry rant on her SoundCloud where she screamed at Gattas for leaving her. Who fucking does that? Who knows someone is in a relationship and then pursues them when their relationship is on the rocks? Who fucking does that? Okay, so get ready, y'all, because you saw sad jazz. Now you're going to see mad jazz. And jazz is mad. Because Spheridge hooked up with her, hung out with her for a few weeks, and then kicked her to the curb for another girl, a white girl, and she's really angry. I'll let her tell you. Who fucking does that, Gottes? You fucking piece of shit! What the fuck is wrong with you? How are you so fucking insecure? Grow the fuck up! You're such a man! A fucking child in a 31-year-old man's body who can't see his fucking fist from his asshole. Who doesn't think straight at fucking all. We were fucking engaged to get married! How the fuck do you just leave? You want to see anger, you piece of shit? This is me being angry! I hate you! and gaslit me when I knew you were cheating on me. You fucking coward. And you don't want love, you want worship. You want fans, you want followers, and you want admirers. You want your fucking cult following. You want your worshipers and your slaves. And I ask you, did you want a slave? Because she so-called cares about you. She doesn't even fucking know you. How do you leave someone after 10 days? What the fuck did she say to you? White girl, white pussy must feel so fucking good, doesn't it? You're lucky I don't have a fucking knife right now. I'd slit your goddamn throat. You deserve no life. All you do is suck energy from everyone around you, you fucking vampire. I hate you. I wish I had something right now to rip out your fucking guts and wrap them around your neck and hang you from a fucking balcony, you piece of shit. I can't fucking stand you. I can't stand your blue fucking bright blue icy eyes. I can't stand the way your body looks when you're fucking naked. I can't stand the way you fuck me from the back. I can't stand the way your hair looks. I can't stand the way you listen to music and sunbathe. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you so fucking much, Guts. You have no fucking idea. I wish you would just fucking die. Come on, Jazz. Why don't you tell us how you really feel? <laughs> Quit holding back. <laughs> Woo! See, I told you guys that this is a twisted tale, right? And it takes a lot of crazy turns that you aren't expecting. And so this is one of the characters who's involved in the tale. And she's a key character in the game because at one point she was helping Gotis to plot to harm Luna. She was willing to be an accessory. 
<clears throat> what do you guys think of this, huh? Uh, I can see you right now, David Sawyer, so you're not blocked. Now, I only bounced one guy personally because he kept like, he kept like dogging on Luna the whole time and like acting like this whole thing is just stupid. So if you think the whole thing is stupid and you don't care about any of this, then you don't need to be here. You know, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I show you guys that this character Spheridge hired Hitman to burn down Luna's house with his own infant son inside. Luckily they weren't home. So the Hitman did actually throw acid on Luna and harm her. She's scarred and disfigured. And they did burn down her place that she stayed. And the hitmen were caught, and they told the authorities uh, who blackmailed them and paid them to do it. Gotus, Gatus, Spheridge. So I'm going to get to all that, but i got to get through all these characters involved in the game so that nobody's confused when they start looking into this themselves. They'll know all of these details pretty much to where they'll understand the story because it's one hell of a twisted tale. It's like a, uh, a real reality TV show, except it's like playing out on the internet for real. Like you can't fake what she just did. That was some legitimate feelings right there. Like you could tell her heart hurt. That's that, that's not acting, man. That, that was the real deal. <laughs> Why don't you just choke? She continued to post angry rants on her social media for a while after this. Gat has posted a video on his channel explaining that he had lost his camera and needed donations in order to buy a new one. We were at the gas station getting some ice for the cooling box. I took it out and because the camera was in the way, I put it on top of the car. Okay, I have this one documented as well on my parody channel. So this one's the camera scam. So he's already ran a few different scams at this point. This one is the camera scam, where he claims he loses his own camera under his own stupidity, and then he begs his audience for money because he lost his own camera. And then he finds his camera, but then he just keeps the money. <laughs> I'll let him tell you. Gat has posted a video on his channel explaining that he had lost his camera and needed donations in order to buy a new one. We were at the gas station getting some ice for the cooling box. I took it out and because the camera was in the way, I put it on top of the car. We went on the road and of course, around 5-10 minutes in, I realized that I never took the camera from the roof of the car. We asked for the footage at the gas station, nobody knew anything. I recalled of course right away when I realized what happened. It was a camera worth over $3,000. This is why I want to ask you guys for support. If you ever wanted to support me in any way at all, this is it. There was no other moment ever. This is literally it because <laughs> what I make my videos with is just gone. And it's just amazingly sad and messed up that this could happen. If you guys could uh, chip in, uh, 20 to $50 each. I'm gonna link my PayPal account and uh, Patreon also, and uh, put uh, under it exactly how much uh, I've gotten. I will update it every 30 to 60 minutes. After receiving $4,000 in donations, he posted a video explaining that his camera had been found by the police, but it was unfortunately broken. So he racked up four grand for a new camera because he told the story that he put his camera on top of a car and then they drove away and then he lost it. And then I've seen the video. It's not broken. He had a broken lens in his hand, but the camera was fine. So I've seen the video and I have the video on my parody channel where he pretends to find it and he pretends to be happy 
and it's just the lens that's broken, not the camera. So he basically got four G's, never returned any of the money. <laughs> and he got away with doing this type of shit over and over and over again. I mean, you know, until guys like me started calling him out for it. And then people started to finally pick up on the scam. But he would routinely just pull these scams and it would work like a charm. His audience is rather gullible. None of the money was returned. In June of 2021, Gott has posted a video introducing his new wife, Catherine, to his audience. He stated that they got married because COVID made it difficult for them to travel together, with her being Canadian. After meeting him, she dropped out of university in order to tag along with the nomadic grifter. Okay, enter scene, a new character. So he ditches Jazz, the black girl, after a couple weeks for this girl, Catherine, who is like, like a 19, 20 year old girl from Canada. And uh, she saw him online with Luna, who was jealous that he was going from country to country and living this. Uh, lavish lifestyle or so she thought that she was so jealous of him and luna's relationship that she wanted to be that girl so she emailed him and got him to fly her out and they met up and were married within like a few days so they got married like almost instantly who does that who the hell sees a guy like this on youtube and is like, oh, yeah, that's the guy I want to be with. I'm going to go get married to him. It still blows my damn mind. Hey, everybody. I want to introduce you to my wife because she's going to be in my videos from now on anyway. And of course, I wanted to do it on Patreon first. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm Catherine. I'm from Canada. Nice to meet you. We're going to do a live stream tomorrow, by the way, if you want to find out more about us, so to speak. Uh, we are in Mexico right now. Yesterday we did an anti-vegan event in New York City, which I still gotta edit. And uh, I'll be posting more stuff on Patreon about Mexico, and I'll still be editing stuff from the US. About the marriage, um, I wanted to commit to her anyway, but uh, we would have probably done it later if it wasn't for Corona and uh, me not being able to go to Canada. She can't go to Europe, so we are trying to figure out what to do after Mexico, and it was just way easier to do the paperwork already, even though we still want to do a proper ceremony later. We did it in Vermont, and uh, the woman who did the ceremony still did a good job, and it still was a real marriage. Uh, I still remember it. Uh, it was quite beautiful. How do you see the marriage? Yeah, it was super nice, um, and yeah, I already knew that I wanted to commit to you, so for me, the ceremony was, was nice as well, even though we did it also with the papers, but it was like, I, I also wanted to do it. Yeah. So this was the first time he showed off his new wife to everyone. And it was like everyone in his comment sections like, oh my God, she's so pretty. Wow, congratulations. So then he was riding this wave where like he he like was basically showing her off in every live stream that he could. And uh so this relationship, shocking. It didn't last. Can you guys believe that this relationship right here, which looks so loving and authentic, it didn't work out. We're going to get to uh, what he did to this poor girl. I don't want to say poor girl because this girl's batshit crazy and she's a psycho. And uh, this girl also was willing to be an accessory to harming Luna. Uh, so we're going to get to all that. But this girl right here, holy shit, super crazy sociopath i mean she didn't try and murder an infant but she did uh marry a guy <laughs> uh who basically uh just ended a relationship uh with luna just out of pure jealousy was the only reason that she wanted to be in the situation at all just a crazy reason to like leave your you know your home country and uh travel abroad and then like marry some guy basically within like a few days of meeting him such a crazy story and can you believe it didn't end well
Thanks for all the support, everybody. In August, Jazz posted screenshots from her conversations with Gattis and included discussing getting married for a green card and strategies to extract as much money as possible from his fans. Gattis also posted two videos of Luna freaking out at security guards in public, this time on his main channel. Keep in mind that this is half a year after breaking up with her and he's still trying to cancel her. In the following month, when he claimed to be staying in Canada, Gattis was actually staying in the Netherlands, in the same city that Luna lives in. Everything kind of reminds me of my so-called past. Uh, everything is just the same in Europe, which is why we decided to go to Canada after all. All right, so in this video, they're in the Netherlands, but they're pretending to be in Canada. And they're in the Netherlands because he's planning on attacking Luna. So in the first planned attack, he goes to the Netherlands and plans to hang out around her house until she shows up or comes outside. And he plans to just beat her with a club. So him and some of his slave scribers originally plan to beat Luna to death with a club. And so here they're pretending to be somewhere where they're not. And they were caught by some uh, very diligent uh, investigators who basically like recognized the furniture and did some behind the scenes work and like compared Airbnb sites. And they found the Airbnb site and found pictures and matched it up perfectly to one in Amsterdam uh, in the Netherlands. So uh, basically they found they were found out that they were lying about this video just by people recognizing the furniture in the background and matching it up to an Airbnb in the Netherlands. <clears throat> Which is where we arrived yesterday. What do you think about it? Yeah, I'm well, super happy to be in Canada. This is my home. Looking at a video he posted while he claimed to be in Canada, it can be determined through Airbnb reviews left on his profile that this room is actually a room in the Netherlands. One review shows a room that looks identical to the one in the video with the exception of furniture that has been changed. The biggest giveaways that this is the same place are the identical dresser, the window, the trees, and the molding on the corner of the wall. The fact that he was pretending to be in Canada while he was actually in Luna's city set off major alarm bells since he had already expressed a hatred towards her as he would have no reason to lie about his whereabouts if he was simply there to see his son. To this day, it's still unclear what went on during his time in the Netherlands. Shortly after all of this information was uncovered, Gattis privated his Airbnb account, but not before his plentiful negative reviews were archived. Around this time, God has posted a video titled, Please Help Me See My Son. This video consisted of him once again complaining about Luna's abuse, and once again begging for money. Alright, I forget the number, what number scam we're on, but here comes the next e-begging scam. He claims, in this video, he's so depressed that he can't see his son. He needs money to fight a legal battle against Luna in order to get custody of his son. So the son that he left refused to sign as the father, doesn't pay any support for, threatened to kill Luna and the kid if she didn't take down the Patreon. Now he's going to claim he needs money to see his son and gain custody of his son. And it's going to be a very expensive legal battle. So now he's going to scam his audience for money to enter a legal battle, a custody battle with Luna. For custody rights over his son. At least that's his claim. Uh, above the surge fitness is what is this about? I'm exposing a bad guy. He's currently on the run for hiring hitman to uh, hiring hitmen to attack his ex girlfriend and his own infant son. Uh, and uh, so basically, I'm exposing a bad guy, and it's going to take me like two and a half, three hours to finally get through all this shit, probably. Anyway, uh, but we're uh, halfway through or so. We're almost we're we're almost halfway, maybe a little more than halfway. So still got a ways to go though, because he actually does hire hitmen to carry out some really evil shit, and the story gets 
even more twisted. But at this point, he's going to get huge donations, way more than before. So before we were talking like uh, 4,000, 5,000. Now we're going to start talking about like uh, Bitcoin donations coming in from generous donors. I realized that I went through torture basically like in the Saw movies, the demon over the two years. I tried to move on from it and uh, so to speak start a new life. There is no moving on from it. It's always in the back of my head, uh, uh, which is why what I'm going to do is uh, go to Germany. Uh, I already contacted a law firm in uh, Den Haag in the Netherlands and uh, yeah, they, they will help me to, yeah, if I can raise the money for it, which is essentially really the main purpose of this video to yeah to try to get me signed up as the parent and then have the rights by the government that I you know naturally deserve anyway uh, be given to me so yeah she did say that it will cost me around three to five thousand euros at least because they charge yeah. and then Ireland is a very expensive country and uh, courts and lawyers everything I'm gonna link uh, PayPal and a pay also my Patreon account but uh, mostly the PayPal just for purpose and uh, Post exactly how much I get from it, uh, from uh, donations to be able to see my child, uh, which I naturally should anyway. But uh... it's strange that he felt the need to beg for money after he had already stated in the past that he didn't consider his son to be his and that he had given up on trying to see him. He was also already in Europe, so his claim that he needed money for the flight was a lie. After only a few hours, he received a Bitcoin donation worth approximately 7,000 US dollars at the time. He immediately withdrew the Bitcoin donation, but did not update the running donation total in the description of the video to acknowledge it until several hours later. The next week. Yeah, and this guy doesn't include, but he ends up getting an entire Bitcoin donated to him on one occasion. And then on another occasion, he begs again and gets another Bitcoin. So somebody out there who has a bunch of Bitcoins gives this dude two full Bitcoins. <clears throat> so he's got some really uh, sick, generous admirers out there who all he has to do is just give them some story. Like, I want to see my son. I need uh, money in order to uh, see my son. And they'll just send him an entire Bitcoin. Like, who the hell does that? Gattis uploaded a video thanking his viewers for the donations and letting his audience know that he was leaving YouTube, a promise that obviously would not be kept. The same week, he uploaded a video titled, I'm Done. In it, Gattis whines like an emo teenager and explains that Kat has dumped him. Okay, and now in this video, he's going to whine and cry that Kath, Kathy dumped him. The, the last chick, the young chick that I just showed you, and that she left. And now he's going to whine and cry and basically, in a roundabout way, say that he's going to off himself. So let's hear that. And you guys can tell me if this sounds authentic to you or whether he sounds like he's just pretending. Hi, hi guys. I'm doing uh, extremely bad. Uh... There's no point to even make this video because nobody can help me with this anyway, but I just really don't know what to do. I have, I have nothing left. Yeah, I have nothing left. I have nothing left in life. Like, nothing at all. Oh my god. And I, I cried yesterday and today, and I cry once every few years, and um, I've never cried in my life two days in a row. I, I just don't do it a lot. And I, I just literally have nothing. It's just, it's just everything is black. There's nothing anymore. Yeah, that the insane depression started with uh, Luna messaging me and telling me I could see my son and then ignoring me to abuse me, punish me. I don't know at the end what the point was. And uh, then um, this Sunday, uh, Catherine also left. God, man, like she said that uh, she would never leave me and everything once the day uh, when we met. And uh, then she just left. It's it, it's unbearable to deal with. Like I've never felt this kind of pain in my life. I mean, that's it. I, I don't know what to do anymore. And like I love everything about her. I, I've never loved anybody so much in my life. Like I I, I don't eat. I sleep three four hours. A day. 
today. I'm on stress hormones nonstop. It only gets worse. Like nothing is getting better. I think the main reason I'm making this video right now is because I think I'm gonna go. Uh, yeah, I don't even want to say it, but like I'm gonna go. Com yeah, it's, it's it's bad. I'm gonna go crazy basically, like in my mind, being alone. Uh, if there's anybody in the Netherlands right now who I don't even know who wants to hang out or anything, I, I literally need some human company right now, or uh, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know why. Uh, maybe I was so weak that she was. I think she was keeping me alive. That's why I fell in love with her so much. Besides. Someone over on the parody channel says, uh, Justin says, uh, Jake, I feel I owe you an apology. I respect you for all you've done since your first videos. Apparently said X making you think I'm a troll, shill, rude, etc. Well, uh, I showed a video clip of how Vegan Gaines was talking about how Gotis hired hitmen to throw a Molotov cocktail in his infant son's window. And the point of the video was that... Uh, Vegan Gaines is talking about it, and Gotis isn't saying anything to Vegan Gaines. He's letting his enemy, his nemesis, tell that story and get away with it. And you kept talking about how gross Vegan Gaines is, and oh my god, please don't talk about Vegan Gaines. And it's like, dude, the video isn't about Vegan Gaines. It's the fact that Vegan Gaines is calling him out for hiring hitmen who threw a Molotov cocktail through his son's window in order to kill his own son. And the fact that he's not going to call out Vegan Gaines for telling a fictitious story, he's just going to ignore it, it must be because the story's true. You see, so I want Gotis's mentally ill slave scribers to see the clip of Vegan Gaines talking about how he hired hitmen and him doing nothing about it. Understand? It's not because I'm a Vegan Gaines fan. So I accept your apology, but you did kind of come at me sideways uh, uh, like like I forced you to watch Vegan Gaines crap or promoted him or something. Yes, I did meet him. I did. I met him and I met Luna. And we played Frisbee and we... Did a video and talked about uh, eating raw eggs. And that was uh, when he did his trip to the United States. Uh, so this is all, all the shit we're watching now is all after I stopped liking him. So when I first met him, all this shit hadn't completely bubbled to the surface yet. He was keeping a lot of this shit under wraps. You see what I'm saying? So it was it was starting to bubble up. But back when I met him was when things were still going good with him and Luna. Understand? So after I met him was when all this shit started to go down. And so when I met him, uh, it was fine. You know, I didn't see them fight or not get along or anything. And we just hung out for a few hours and played Frisbee and made a video. Okay, so... Uh, now we're going to get to the, the twisted shit because this uh, documentary here's about over. And now I'm going to get you guys caught up on the actual attacks and the hitmen and stuff like that. So this is the point where he's crying and saying he's going to quit YouTube and basically tells his subs he's going to, uh, in a roundabout way, uh, take his own life. That I found her incredibly, be incredibly beautiful and attractive. So that's it. Uh, I, I just see nothing. I just see black. That's it. That's black. Ever since this point in time, Kat has not made any sort of public appearance or response. On October the 12th of 2021, the video Married to a Sociopath for Five Months was uploaded to Gatis's channel. Hey guys. I'm gonna try to explain what happened with my wife, Catherine. I'm filming this video in Paris, France, which is where we wanted to settle down. Actually, um, she said that she saw herself in my ex -girl.
All right, so that video uh, was on the channel called Mortadella, and it's uh, called This YouTuber Wants to Eat You, Spearage Documentary. And he's also got some other videos. Uh, so now I'm going to catch you guys up on the next part. <laughs> so Gotis then, after he whines and cries that he's going to leave YouTube and, and maybe take his own life, then another girl shows up. <laughs> another girl named Belle who he calls Primal Bell, shows up. And that's his current girlfriend, who's still with him to this day. And he creates another kid with Bell, a daughter. So he now has two kids. But let's go ahead and see what happened with Kathy and get Kathy's side of the story. After Gaddis received a single Bitcoin donation in 2022, a single mother matching Luna's, Gaddis ex-girlfriend, description, was attacked with acid near her house in May. In January 2023, the woman's house was burned down, and the suspected arsonists were caught. There were some rumors circulating at the time that the victim was Luna, but it was only in late March 2023 that the rumors were gaining noticeable traction, with YouTubers and acquaintances claiming it as fact. Discussion of initial articles and claims, Gaddis' violent history of being a perpetrator of a mass stabbing in high school, allegations he beat probably every woman he has ever been with, and claims from his ex-girlfriend Jasmine that he wanted to murder Luna in early 2021 made the bizarre story somewhat believable. It was then discovered that a video Gaddis had posted in November 2021 of being chased and beaten by, who he claimed to be, Luna's friend took place a few blocks from where the acid attack and arson took place. place. All right, here's the setup for this clip right here. Um, so when he was with Kathy in the Netherlands and they lied about being in Canada, he was actually planning to beat Luna's head in with a club. And so he was waiting around her house and Luna had a friend, a dude with her, and the dude came out with a club of his own and chased off Gotis and his friends and actually beats Gotis with the club a few times and hits him in the back and in the hand, I guess. Uh, so this is video of Gotis getting beat up by with a club when he's hanging around Luna's place. So this was his first attempt when he was going to personally do the attacking, and it didn't go so well. It just hit me several times. In mid April, Catherine Gaddis. And then people on the internet doing their own investigating matched up the streets from the video. So that video, even though it doesn't seem like you can see much, they were able to match up the street, which is, of course, where Luna lives. So they were able to basically figure out that he was there and lying about being in Canada. And then he got his ass whooped and had to retreat. So that was a video of him uh, getting hit while running away. <laughs> 
In mid-April, Catherine, Gaddis' ex-wife, made a number of videos claiming that Gaddis often talked about wanting to throw acid in Luna's face and wanting to put her house on fire and confirmed that the articles were about Luna. Catherine also alleges that she, Gaddis, and YouTuber German Carnivore slash Florian Strack, post-discussing GC, conspired to kidnap and kill Luna in late 2021. I just wanted to make a quick video. Um, I can tell you that when we were together, Gaddis often talked about wanting to throw acid in Luna's face. He often talked about wanting to put her house on fire. And then uh, I was in the Netherlands and... In between many of the call-out videos Catherine made, she often recanted her allegations or made bizarre claims that Gaddis was a good guy, which lead many to suspect she was either being blackmailed or was an unreliable witness. Meanwhile, Gaddis released a since-deleted video where he subtly hinted that he would be releasing revenge pornography of Catherine on a Telegram channel he created. So, Kathy comes out and puts out videos on her own channel and talks about the abuse that she suffered when she was with Gotis. And she claims that he beat her up. She also claims he put glue in her vagina and that he also wanted to set Luna's house on fire and that he talked about setting Luna's house on fire all the time and made plans to set Luna's house on fire. And so Kathy comes out and spills the beans. And then she takes down her own video, and then she comes out and says she was lying and that Gotis is a great guy, which means she's been threatened to, uh, that she's been threatened with blackmail. So Gotis then threatens that he will upload uh, revenge porn and nude photos and stuff if she keeps talking and doesn't recant her story. So she recants her story. But then she takes that video down and then says that she was telling the truth. And then she takes that video down and makes another video saying she wasn't telling the truth. So she recants her story three or four different times, makes probably seven different videos, and in each instance deletes her video. I have them all cataloged. And uh, so I have every one of Kathy's testimonies and then anti-testimonies. And so in this video clip right here, Gotis will instruct his uh, hardcore subscribers to attack Kathy and her family. And so he does it in a very cryptic way. And so I'll let you guys watch this clip and then I'll continue from there. Yo guys, if you're a regular viewer of this channel, then ignore this video. This is not for you. This is only for my hard die fans, if you understand what I mean. Somebody messaged me that they have very important information which will be released about Caroline, if you understand who I mean. The comments for this video will be turned off because there's nothing to discuss here. There will be a link in the description of this video of a telegram channel and everything is going to be revealed there if you want to really help then join it thank you and then the telegram group has her nudes and her family's address and her id completely doxing her and her family so he doxes her and her family posts the nudes and clips of her dancing nude. And uh, many people, a lot of his audience, of course, you know, saw this, downloaded it and whatnot. So he humiliates uh, Kathy with this revenge uh, porn, if you will. And uh, so at that point, like, he made it pretty obvious that he was the one blackmailing her and doing that. So, like, a lot of people at that point started to figure out he's a piece of shit. And uh, Kathy did go on to say that he beat her up and put glue in her vagina. And so all those videos are out there and uh, can be found in their entirety. Uh, but Kathy also does recant uh, her testimony because she was in fear of being blackmailed. So uh, at one point, uh, it seemed like she could be someone reliable to tell the story, but then she went back on her own story so many times. And then at one point, she even tried to go after me. 
and uh, and then she took down all every in and, and in every case she would always take down her own videos so she basically became like uh uh, very unreliable in anything that she was going to say or do from that point forward. And I didn't want to uh, like invite her on my channel as a guest to tell the story or anything, because she had already shown that she was willing to flip flop, you know, tell the truth and then lie about telling the truth. So anyway, so she got doxxed and he posted nudes and stuff like that of her. And then she disappeared. She took down all her channels and then disappeared. But she also admitted that she was with him while he planned to burn down Luna's house. So she's basically an accomplice to his crimes. So I can see why she doesn't want to uh, put herself out there too much, being that she is basically an accomplice. He's going to release revenge porn or worse of Catherine, Caroline, 019. Same thing he did to Luna a while back. Only for my true fans, only fans. When Catherine initially left him and SV3 Rige, you're rooting for the villain. You're rooting for a guy who tried to torch a baby. So you think a villain who hires hitmen to throw a Molotov cocktail through the window of an infant, his own son, who's innocent. I'm not. I'm not saying that uh, their relationship didn't have turmoil, but the kid is innocent in the whole thing. So the fact that he's hiring hitmen to torch a baby, you think that's cool? And you're, you're low-key rooting for him? Maybe you should be one of his mentally ill slave scribers who sends him money each month while he's on the run from the law currently. If you're low-key rooting for him. I don't know, I think that makes you kind of a piece of shit if you're low-key rooting for the bad guy in this scenario, the guy who hires hitmen to try and torch a baby. Made that Kathy the Great channel, he replied to a comment hinting that he'd release revenge porn of her soon. He eventually does, releasing an archive including nudes and miscellaneous videos of Catherine, her full docs, and a scan of her driver's license. Included an important info, .txt is Catherine's full docs, including messages encouraging his followers to pay her family members a lovely visit at their home address and their places of employment. The final paragraph encourages his suicidal followers who feel their life is genetically failed to buy a ticket to Canada to pay Gaddis respect. True natural respect. Meanwhile, in late April, the preliminary hearing for the suspected arsonists, a 33-year-old German man identified as Ilias A. and his 15-year-old daughter, commenced. Articles published explain that Ilias claimed that he was threatened by Luna's ex-boyfriend, obviously Gaddis, but he is not named in the articles, who he describes as an avid vlogger. Ilias explains that his own ex, Primal Bell, also not named in articles because of EU privacy, is currently dating Gaddis. Earlier, Bell announced her pregnancy in January, but then went dark on social media, her final Instagram post being a day before the arson attack. The motive for the attacks has not been fully established as of this post. Another article alleges that Ilias' daughter claims they were paid to attack Luna, while Ilias claims this was a cover story he told her, and that he was threatened. In light of recent articles, some suspect that a video posted by Gaddis in February 2022, original post, addressed to Bell's ex, may contain a coded message to invoke the attacks on Luna. All right, so here's a detail that is really extra crazy on top of this really extra crazy story as it is. So the, the girl he's with now is named Bell. Uh... That's not her real name. Her real name is Marina, but they call her Belle. And uh, her ex was blackmailed into being the hitman who tried to burn down Luna's house, or did burn it down. And so basically, the, the girl he's with now, it's her ex who was the hitman, and he was 
blackmailed into doing this and paid to do this. And uh, so the story is extra twisted uh, as far as uh, he actually blackmailed the hitmen in this video clip, uh, speaking in like German here. And in a veiled threat, basically blackmails this guy into committing the arson attack. Okay, also ich muss echt etwas dazu sagen. Das, was du jetzt angeblich gemacht hast, war ja alles für ihr Wohl. Aber ich bin mir 100% sicher, dass du sowas niemals tun würdest. Ich weiß das. Deshalb ist das, was du an Start gemacht hast und wie du es gemacht hast, noch viel schlimmer für sie. Denk doch echt darüber nach und denk über deine Zukunft nach, deine Kinder, alles. Okay, so I really have to say something about it. What you allegedly did was all for her own good. But I am 100% sure that you would never do something like that. I know that. That's why what you did instead and how you did it is even worse for her. Really think about it and think about your future, your children, everything. Dadis has been known do this in the past, such as how he announced the revenge porn plot on Catherine. Catherine recently explained that going to Norway was the code used for the first murder attempt on Luna. This phrase was uttered in October 2021, a month before the video Gaddis posted of him getting his ass beat in Luna's neighborhood. Some posters suspect that Ilias may have been blackmailed into doing the attack. Shortly after Gaddis message to Ilias, Bell has posted a since deleted Instagram post claiming that the reason why she had a nose job was because her ex destroyed her nose bridge. Whatever the story is, both Bell and Gaddis whereabouts are currently unknown. Catherine claims that Gaddis recently encouraged Catherine to buy a plane ticket to Thailand so they could meet up. A recent article also claims that Luna's whereabouts are also unknown, which could be a result of her being put in a witness protection program. Gaddis continues to livestream on YouTube to this day and made a recent video claiming that he is very close to owning a house. Gaddis continues to receive generous donations from his subscribers, including some more, plural, Bitcoin. Recent articles explain that the prosecutor believes that there is more to the story that Ilias is not revealing, but a request to subpoena Bell and Gaddis for testimony was denied by the judge. The next hearing for Ilias trial is scheduled for July 13th. Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Okay, so now we're going to check out the security camera footage of Luna uh, getting attacked. She's not in full view of the camera, but she's just on the outskirts of the view of the camera. And the guy that he uh, hires first to attack her with acid is waiting outside of her backyard. And then when she goes outside the backyard, the guy throws acid in her face and all over her arm. And it severely burns her and scars her. And so we're going to see that footage. And so I'm just going to warn you guys, it's, uh, it's not super graphic, but it is, uh, it isn't something that's pleasant to watch. <clears throat> so we're going to check that out. But first, before I do that, I wanted to show you uh, Primal Bell. So this is the woman who he's currently with, Primal Bell here. And he has a daughter with this girl now. And they're on the run with a, a, a young daughter, an infant daughter, hopping from country to country, uh, keeping their whereabouts hidden. So they don't want anyone to know where they're at because they're literally on the run. They're like a family trying to raise a baby while being fugitives. It's got to be a wonderful life, right? And so they're, he they're held up somewhere. People uh, have rumored that it's uh, possibly some Asian country. Uh, but Interpol, uh, international authorities are supposedly looking into this and he is wanted, but being he's an international fugitive, it's not easy to just locate him and snag him up apparently. <clears throat> so back to the footage of Luna and again. It's uh, a bit disturbing, but uh, it needs to be shown.
All right, I got a super chat from Hell Pike. Says, I'm glad Luna is alive. Show support chat. Hit like and share. Let's get Jake more mentally ill slave scribers. No, no, my, my subscribers, my subscribers are, are not mentally ill. I've got the best audience ever. Mentally ill slave scribers is the term I use for Gotus's fans. And so I don't want uh, anyone to have any confusion there. Uh, but uh, thank you for the donation. And uh, yeah, we're about to watch the moment when Luna gets attacked uh, with, with acid. And uh, so, uh, okay, I'm going to play it. Here we go. All right, main points. Catherine Gattis and German Carnivore, the guy who did the acid attack, planned to kill Luna and were stalking her in the Netherlands while pretending to be in Canada. Gattis beat Cat and put glue in her vagina. She tried to leave him. Cat fled to the consulate, leaving her passport and computer behind. Gattis and Florian stalked her there. And when she went to a woman's shelter, Gattis started making videos blaming everything on Cat and leaving pri leaking private videos that she had on her computer. Kat reached out to Belle, got this as new girlfriend, and explained what happened, and Belle said she was going through similar things with Gottis, and he was threatening to kill her family if she leaves him. Similar things with Gottis, and he was threatening to, or after Kat made a video exposing what Gottis had done to her, Gottis posted her and her family's information online and encouraged his suicidal fans to kill them he also posted nude photos of her so basically just recapping some stuff
when we were together, Gaddis often talked about wanting to throw acid in Luna's face. He often talked about wanting to put her house on fire. And then uh, I was in the Netherlands and her house was there and we found her house basically, but I left after that. Um, so, but I can confirm that in the two articles, it is indeed Luna's house. Gaddis also hit me several times and he threatened me with a knife um, while putting glue inside of my vagina. Hey everyone, I know I talk slow and everything, I'm just going to try to speed it up. Um, I just wanted to talk now about what happened with Luna. So when I was with him, he was constantly talking about wanting to eliminate her and hurt her, torture her, all the time. He was always talking about it. Um, and yeah, obviously he wanted to be with me to, to show me off on the channel to make her jealous because he's so obsessed with her. When we were together at one point, he that's when he started to talk that we were in Mexico and he just said something like, I want to eliminate Luna and he wanted to talk about it with me. I was complicit to everything, but I did leave before he um, paid for the arson and the acid. So when I was with him, we never did anything to her, um, but we did like, try to fuck her over many times um we and we were all doing it together like i'm not gonna say as if i didn't do anything you know uh we were me german carnivore and gaddis were in german carnivore's white van and driving around luna's house and and we were just finding ways to to find her address to Yeah, so Kathy does these videos where she admits to being an accomplice, but then she deletes them. And then she thinks like nobody out there might have a copy. But of course, there's always a copy made. If you post a video like this, somebody who hates Gotis is going to have a screen recorder running and they're going to have a copy. So every time she made one of these videos, she would take it back down and delete it. But there's always a copy. And she even went as far as to copyright strike my parody channel. When I posted the video, bad girl, Kathy, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, I'm trying to do something good. You're the one who's an accomplice. Don't go copyright striking my damn channel because you chose to be an accomplice and hang out with that dude. So this girl right here, yeah, I've got issues with her as well, but at least she didn't personally hire hitmen, so she's not as much to blame. Not as much. Um, find ways to get her, to kidnap her, stuff like that. Um, and I just, I guess I went along with it because he talked about it so much that I just really doubted that he would actually like do it. I don't know, I just wanted to see I know it's weird, but I just wanted to see if he would do what he says. Yeah, we were looking around for her. We found her address through a private detective, and then we were able to convince a guy on the beach to um, call her mom and um, convince her to give, give us the address. Basically, the man pretended to be someone that needed her address to deliver some food and that's how we got the address basically and uh when we were in the white van with german carnivore and gaddis uh it was all the time 24 7 talking about what they would do to to her like put her in the van bring her here kidnap her kill her blah 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 everything it was non-stop and and the reason why is because he can't get over her. Like, he's just probably really in love with her. So, like, that's why he can't move on. Of course, that it's Gaddis that paid with bitcoins someone to attack Luna and put a, a, her house on fire. We often talked about, me and Gaddis, about throwing, like, well, he did whatever, like, throwing, a, like, a tank in the window of her house and blowing her her house up. So Kathy's coming out and spilling the beans. And this is what what led him to blackmail her and post her nudes and stuff. 
And so when she came out and did these videos, he threatened her that she needs to reverse her testimony. So she did a few times come out and be like, oh, I was lying. He's a great guy. I just want him to be happy. I'm just jealous. I, I was lying. I'm sorry. And then she like would take that video down and then she'd come back out with another video and be like, I wasn't lying. He's blackmailing me. And then she'd take that video down and then she'd be like, I was lying about lying. He's not blackmailing me. I'm stupid. Don't listen to me. So eventually he did blackmail her. And so then she just disappeared and she hasn't shown up in uh, several months. <clears throat> We talked about like me attacking her, stuff like that. Like I was in it. I was 100% in it. Hey everyone. <sighs> Belle is definitely being controlled. Well, not being controlled by Goddess, but he is most probably threatening her that if she leaves, um, that she can't leave him. I did talk on the phone with Belle one time um and she did tell me that she wanted to leave on the phone but then afterwards like we didn't really talk about it that much and i tried to tell her everything about about him i tried to to talk on instagram with her but her like answers are super weird and like i just know that gaddis is like telling her what to answer and like looking over and looking at her messages like i i know him like i know that he maybe is thinking that that bell is trying to leave and he's getting super suspicious and he doesn't leave his, her side like when we were together and like he thought that i was gonna leave he would not let me like leave his side he would be super like suspicious of me one time like, yeah one time i, I had left um and he tracked my phone and tracked me down and then um that's when he shaved my head like i have my passport picture of it if you guys ever want to see he took a video of it but i'm the one shaving my own head because he was super super mad at that point he even told me on the phone that he had no problem to cut the head of a baby off and like i just and honestly like not just for the baby for me it's like i really want to help Belle because i know how it feels like I, like i know her exact situation but right now it's even worse because she's about to give birth and he took that as an insult when i talked about his hair and asked if it was a hair system or a hair transplant. And he literally answered me, stop insulting me. News is true, and I have in fact been attacked with acid, and our home was set on fire in an attempt to kill me and my son. News is true, and I have in fact been attacked with acid.
Okay, so that's Luna admitting that she has been attacked with acid, and she has a channel, and she just started coming out and talking a little bit, but she's very scared and doesn't want to uh, impede, I guess, with the investigation, so she can't come out and say everything that people want her to say, but she has come out and talked a little bit and released a few little video clips at least. And uh, pictures of her injuries have surfaced as well. And so she's got burns on her face and really bad on her arm. So it was the worst on her arm. Like uh, it, they were talking about how they might have had to amputate her arm at one point because it was so bad. So uh, she's permanently scarred by the acid attack. And they did burn down her house. They burnt the place out that she stayed at. So... Uh, she told the police that she was afraid before this happened, but they didn't take her her seriously. And then after it happens, of course, then the police are like, oh, well, I guess we should take this seriously. So, uh, yeah, we have the security footage, got Luna herself admitting it. And on top of it all, Gotis refuses to address any of this. So if anyone asks him about it, he just bans you. So he's literally running from the law and then banning anyone who mentions it. And so up to this date, the dude's posting new content, but he won't go live anymore. And the reason he won't go live is because then they can find out his whereabouts. You can post a video from anywhere, schedule it to upload any time. And someone else can upload a video on your account, but you know, on your behalf. But when you go live, then they can get your actual live address. And so he doesn't go live anymore. And he used to go live all the time, like every week, and beg for money. So he doesn't go live anymore, which further proves he's on the run. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and show you guys my parody channel on broadcasting live on two channels. This is the channel I created. Uh, when the hell did I create this? In 2021, I created this channel to teach Gotis a lesson. And this was before he did the acid attack, had hired hitmen to do the acid attacks and the arson attack. So this was just when he was just an e-begging scammer and I wanted to teach him a lesson. I started a channel to basically mock him, troll him, and it didn't take long before I started getting views on these videos, thousands of views, and it started to build its own audience. And so then I started to regularly make this parody content, and it's really easy to make. I just pretend to be him, or I show videos of him contradicting himself. And so these videos are just quick, easy videos and they would get thousands of views. And then I would just document all the shit that he's done. And at one point, he went from being bald to getting a hair tattoo. And then he got a hair system for men and tried to pass it off as if uh, it's his own natural hair. So he's such a hypocrite that like he'll lie about his hair and he won't even be honest with his audience about his hair. Hands down, the best product I've seen all. All right, I'll play one of my parody videos so you guys can see what my parody channel is all about. Hair transplants are cool. I like them. It's probably the most useful surgery for looks, especially for men, although a lot of women also do hair transplants. Hair transplants are cool. I like them. It's so funny that he gets his head shaved uh, almost every day. And that's simply because of how insecure he is about his hair loss. If he wasn't, and if people who have hair loss wouldn't be so insecure about it, then they would simply let it grow as it is. They would uh, let the sides only grow if they only had hair on the sides. But uh, 
you really try to cover it up by shaving the head. But a lot of these insecure guys will always say, just shave it off, embrace it. How is that embracing it? Embracing your hair loss would literally be letting it grow out as it is. But you don't. You try to hide it by shaving it like this insecure squirrel looking guy. Hair transplants are cool. I like them. People who have hair loss wouldn't be so insecure about it. Then they would simply let it grow as it is. They would uh, let the sides only grow if they only had hair on the sides. But uh, you really try to cover it up by shaving the head. But a lot of these insecure guys will always say, just shave it off, embrace it. How is that embracing it? Embracing your hair loss would literally be letting it grow out as it is. Hair transplants are cool. I like them. But you don't. You try to hide it by shaving it like this insecure squirrel looking guy. <laughs> Start making a lot of money while getting my head shaved. Oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> like, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> I didn't expect this. <laughs> <laughs> I generally crave testicles. 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 I generally crave testicles because testicles do taste very good. None of them have ever tasted bad. None of them have ever tasted bad. That's a testicle. That's a testicle. I generally crave testicles. I generally crave testicles. I generally crave testicles because testicles do taste very good. This is the big dance. So that's basically what one of my parody videos might look like. And so I do videos where I mock his voice. I do videos where I have him contradicting himself. And so my parody channel has an audience basically that enjoys him getting roasted, enjoys him getting what he has coming to him. And so basically, uh, I'm like one of the guys exposing not only, you know, his dirty deeds and his crimes, but also his supreme hypocrisy. I mean, the guy's not only a woman beater, but he's literally like one of the biggest hypocrites online. This is a guy who will like make fun of someone's hair while wearing a, a fucking wig. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a guy that'll say that someone is a bad father if they give their kid popcorn. Meanwhile, he paid to have his kid killed. So hypocrisy uh, reaches a whole new level with this guy. So if we go, this is him right here. And he has this, we are all equal message. A lot of us think that's the next thing he's going to do is come out as being fruity, if you know what I mean. We think that's the next step. So he basically just makes videos talking about how other men are ugly and other men have issues. And then anyone who goes to the gym, he says that you're killing your body and you're a moron for going to the gym. And so his channel is just basically nothing but like uh, talking trash about people, but he won't dare respond to me or anyone talking about Luna or any of his crimes. So anyone who makes a video talking about what he's done, he won't dare mention it. He ignores it. And if anyone comments, if you were to like go to one of his videos and leave a comment about this, you'll get banned instantly. You'll be the only one seeing your comments. So, if you guys want to try and go talk shit, all you're going to be doing is getting banned instantly. So, I'm just letting you know. If you plan on going over there to talk shit to the guy, he's got his finger on the ban button 24-7. So. Basically, in a nutshell, uh, that is the story of Gotis, the uh, saga of Spearage.
I can maybe show you guys one more parody video where I do the voice. Okay. So in this video, he's wearing a backwards hat like Fred Durst. And so when he was shaving his head and got a head tattoo, and people made fun of his head tattoo, he uh, he actually he got a hairline tattoo. So he got a tattoo of hair. So people were making fun of him. So at this point, he, he starts wearing a backwards hat like Fred Durst. So this was a few years back, but it's a uh, it's one of my better uh, parody videos that I made. This one is called uh, "Spheridge Dating Advice: How to Attract Women in Nature." Enjoy. I recently watched the red pill videos that you recommend to me, and I must say they are some of the most mentally fucking ill losers that I have ever seen on YouTube. First of all, they have no idea how to talk to a woman. If you want to talk to a woman, you have to shower her with many compliments, you know. You tell her she looks beautiful. You tell her that her vagina is very nice and wet looking. And the most important thing that you want to do if you want to be successful with women the same way I have been very successful is you want to look like Fred Durst from the band Limp Bizkit from the year 1999. I currently am doing my best impression of Fred Durst and this is what is causing me to have the best success with women in all of my life. You could say that I am doing it for the nookie, you know the nookie, so you can take that cookie and stick it up your ya, stick it up your ya, you know, you can stick it up your ya. One of the main reasons these red pill fucking losers will never be happy and will never have sex with a woman is because they do not know how to speak to a woman properly. Let me show you a very good example of how I would approach and talk to a woman if I was to find her out in nature. I actually, a funny thing happened two days ago. There's no joke. Uh, I was walking in Sofia in the, in the park, in the forest, and uh, some woman was walking and I see something like dripping and uh, I get closer and closer, and I see she has no underwear on, and her pussy is really wet and dripping all over the ground. So I like say, hey, miss, uh, do you need help with this, or what, what is it? She says, well, uh, it is wet, it's dripping, like, it's kind of saying, come and fuck the puss, bitch. Then I fuck her, I kill her, so I buried her in the forest. And uh, that's why I escaped Sofia, because uh, I thought in Macedonia they maybe won't, you know, see what happened. <laughs> I should go to bed. Uh, good night, guys. And this is exactly why I have been so successful with women my whole life and have never had any issues whatsoever. I start very successful family with Luna. She is currently raising my baby while I live with Bella in France. And of course, Catherine, my ex-wife, she was a psychopath, but she was very wonderful lady. We have very many good times. All of this is 100% success rate with women. So if you want to be happy and live a natural life like me, you have to do exactly what I fucking do unless you are mentally ill. So, yo, yo, first thing you want to do is dress up like Fred Durst. And if you look anything other than the lead singer from Limp Bizkit, you are going to be fucking mentally ill and unhappy.
I chose Wix for my business because of its All right. In some of the parody videos, I do a voiceover. And then in other parody videos, I actually pretend to be Gotis. So in this one, I pretend to be him. What's up, guys? Anyone who shaves their head is extremely mentally ill. Spending each and every day running a man-made razor against your skull is completely unnatural out in nature nobody would ever shave their head only insecure losers shave their head every day the only thing worse than someone who shaves their head every day would be somebody who then glues a wig to their head and then acts as if the fake hair is actually real the saddest losers in the world glue vigs to their head they wear fake hair <laughs> they wear fake hair they wear fake hair they glue a fucking vig to their head they're wearing fake hair and then they act as if it is real as if nobody notices Everyone notices you are wearing a wig on your fucking head. And you are incredibly much a loser. You have literally no chance at ever having sexual intercourse with a woman if you wear a wig on your head. Especially if you are shaving your head every day like Andrew Tate, the loser Andrew Tate. If you do not look like me, then you have literally zero chance of being with a woman. I, of course, have the perfect nose and the perfect cheek and jaw structure. That is why I am literally a magnet for women. If you don't look like me, then you should probably be part of my hard die subscribers. And if you could please visit my ex-wife's house, Catherine, and pay your respects to her, that would be great. Thanks for watching. <gasps> All right, so that's another one of my parody videos. So I, I troll the shit out of this guy. And not because I'm a troll or I'm a, a meanie or a bully. It's because he has it coming and he deserves it. And it feels good to uh, call out a bad guy, you know, who, who I know is going to ignore all this and run from it. So he runs from me. He won't dare respond. And I know he won't respond. So I can do and say whatever I want. And he's a two chicken shit to say anything or do anything about it, but he might try and hire hitmen to kill me. So I want to let everybody know uh, if I die, uh, it might be because this guy hired a hitman to do the dirty deed. I'm pretty sure he wants me dead for what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. So if you guys want to uh, subscribe and binge watch this content, this is the Spheridge Gotis Parody Videos channel. His original channel is called Spheridge. His current channel is called Gotis. People refer to him as Spheridge, Gotis, or Gatis. And so I just combine both of them together for my parody channel. And all the content on this channel is based around this guy and the crimes he's committed. So I make fun of his bald head. But I also talk about the serious shit that he did to Luna. So it's not just fun and games. It started as fun and games, me just making fun of him a little bit to teach him a lesson. And now it has evolved into chasing down an international fugitive. Yeah, when I started the channel, he wasn't a fugitive yet. So he's become a fugitive since I started the channel, making my channel just absolutely explode with, with new growth. So for a parody channel, I'm getting pretty damn good views. Like 2,000, 2,800 subs. I'm getting more views than I have subs on every damn video. So now that I'm 
uh, promoting it with my main channel of 75,000 subs, I'm thinking that this channel is going to get a, a boost, of course. It's obviously going to get a boost since I'm here talking about it right now. So for those of you who didn't know, uh, who are watching from the Goat Disparity channel right now, I have a channel called Jake the Asshole with 75,000 subs that you're currently looking at on the screen. So this is my channel. If you're watching from the Goat Disparity channel and you didn't know that I have my own channel, I do. This is my main channel. I break down conspiracies. And so I talk about all sorts of stuff, sports being rigged, uh, shootings being staged, uh, uh, celebrities being replaced, uh, Hollywood uh, humiliation rituals, space being fake, and the list goes on. So I have a ton of different content on this channel. So for those of you who didn't know about my other channels, now you know. All right. So there we go. I've been meaning to do that. Catch everyone up on this channel about Gotis so that if you ever are to stumble across my parody channel, you'll understand what it is and why it is. And for those of you who now go over there and check out the parody channel, now you know who I'm talking about and you'll get it. And the more you follow the story, the more details you'll figure out and uh, the more all of it will make sense. So yeah, I've been uh, putting that off for a while, uh, telling everyone on the Jake the Asshole channel uh, about the Gotis parody videos channel and catching everyone up. So today I figured was a good day to do it. And now I have done it. And I knew it was going to take an entire stream to just talk about this one guy. But did you hear all the shit that I had to go over? That's a bunch of scams, <laughs> a bunch of different chicks. Uh, a bunch of shit. So, yeah. This That's a good question, Sean. So we don't know where he's holed up right now. Uh, I've heard rumors that he's holed up in a, in a, uh, a Muslim country or something right now. So there's rumors that he's uh, like in Kazakhstan or possibly somewhere in Asia. But uh, he's not letting his whereabouts be known. He's not going live anymore. So he hasn't done a live stream in like seven months, eight months. And so I call him out and say, hey, why don't you address this? If it's all bullshit, if it's a made up story and you can debunk it, why don't you go live and debunk this? But he won't dare go live. He won't dare address it. And if you ask him about it, he bans you. So you guys know me. If I was to... Uh, if anyone was to make a video about me making up a lie, saying that I did something terrible, like committed a crime that I know I didn't commit, you guys know I would immediately destroy that person and debunk every damn thing they said, and I would make sure everybody knows that it's bullshit. So there's been plenty of videos that have been made about me, and I got no problem addressing it, debunking the shit out of it. And making sure everyone knows it ain't true. So if somebody was to make up a story that I hired hitmen to do X, Y, or Z, you better believe I would shoot that shit down immediately. It would have no chance if it wasn't true. So the fact that people are making these allegations and there's uh, footage of Luna being attacked and Luna's admitted it and the hitmen were caught and gave him up. All the evidence is there. It's literally like an open and shut case. They just need to catch the son of a bitch. And so the only people left not believing that he did it are his hardcore slave scribers who refuse to look at the evidence. Because anybody who scratches the surface can tell, holy shit, he did those things. And it's not just hearsay on the internet or a big made up story at this point. John Turner says, Jake, what is your day job? You're looking at it. I pay my bills with YouTube, and um, I have been paying my bills with YouTube for years. I am a professional YouTuber. And unlike Gotus, I don't run scams. 
So when people like donate to my channel, it's because they appreciate my channel and like it, or they want to ask me a question or they want me to do a voice impression or sing a song. So I've never ran any sort of scam on my audience. And so that's why my reputation is intact. No one can claim that I like scam my audience for tens of thousands of dollars like Gotis has done. <clears throat> My laptop specs, I have a, um, a MacBook from 2017, so it's old. I have an old MacBook. I need to update is what needs to happen. I have the money to update everything. It's just technologically, the world has passed me by, and I've been using my same iPhone and MacBook since 2017. <laughs> basically, not the exact same phone, but basically a shitty iPhone, not one of the fancy ones. And so for me to like upgrade everything about my channel, new microphone, uh, you know, uh, audio interface to plug in my bass, uh, uh, recording gear, this, that, and the other, I have the money to do it and I want to do it and I am going to do it. The problem only exists that I don't know how to use any of the shit and I don't even know what I want or what's good, what, what's best for me. So I'm in the process of upgrading everything, which means I have to research everything, figure out what I even need or want, and then buy it, and then through trial and error, figure out how to use it. So over the next six months to a year, I'm going to be upgrading everything, computer, microphone, studio, all of it. I just have the uh, issue of learning what it is I want and how to use it. <laughs> so it's like I'm a musician, but re the recording of music uh, was never my specialty. And so that was always something someone helped me with. So something as easy as recording a song, I have to like start from scratch and figure out how to do everything all over again. It's going to be a pain in the ass. But once I get up and running and get comfortable with my new setup, that's when the magic is going to happen. When I can fire up a, a, a new song without thinking and quickly pump out new material like easily and know how to run all the shit that I buy, that's when shit's really going to snowball. It's just going to take like a year or so for me to get it all and figure it all out. So right now I'm running the stream as a professional YouTuber with no mic, no professional mic no professional gear, just an old ass laptop, me using the default settings microphone, which is an ass backwards way of doing things. But I've been doing it ass backwards for so long that uh, for me to like buy all new shit means I have to like sit and figure out how to use it all, which means a ton of time and effort just in trial and error. <laughs> Ugh. Yep, the old glue in the vagina antics. I mean, who hasn't seen that scenario played out, right? The old glue in the vajayjay routine. I got a request that I expose somebody I've never heard of. Seth Taylor says, please expose AMTV. Christopher Green. I don't even know who that is. But who knows? Maybe I'll find out. Maybe I won't like him. And maybe I'll expose him. So just a few days ago, what, like four days ago, I exposed Owen Benjamin and Zach Hubbard in the same stream. And I was expecting a bit of backlash, but there wasn't much. There was only like three bears who cried. I had to ban like one bear who had his head up Owen Benjamin's ass. That was about it. So there wasn't that much backlash when I exposed Owen Benjamin. There was a lot of people who were like, I don't even know who this guy is. And then uh, a bunch of people who already knew that he was a piece of shit who were like, tell me something I don't know, Jake. And then when I got to Zach Hubbard, I've exposed him several times before. So it was another case of people being like, yeah, we know. We know he's a piece of shit. But there was a few new people who didn't know who Zach was or who didn't know who Owen was that I 
opened up their eyes and showed them what a toxic cult leader looks like. But now that you've seen Spearage, he takes toxic cult leader to this whole other level. So Zach Hubbard, uh, you know, he's a good sports pick em scammer. But like Spearage's lies and scams where you beat up your own girlfriend and claim it's muggers and you need money to fix her face. Holy shit, man. That's that's the next level. Uh, see me rolling says just got here. Can you start it all over? Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, so if you're going to want to catch up on this, then put it at 1.25 speed and, you know, watch it next time you have, you know, uh, some free time. I always tell people, if you want to catch up on my streams, put it on like when you're on a long car ride. So when I'm on a long car ride is when I like to listen to podcasts that are over an hour long. So if I got a two hour drive, that's when I want to listen to a long podcast or something to make the time seem to go by quicker. So my suggestion to you guys, if you have a long car ride over an hour, two hours, three hours, whatever, throw on one of my long live streams and uh, I'll make your car ride shoot by quicker. I promise you. Yeah, so the, the big joke with Spearage to this day is that he would claim anything that he doesn't like or that he's against is unnatural. You know, rules are completely man made. The age of consent is completely man made. Out in nature, there is no such thing as age of consent, of course. And so, literally, you get to choose when you believe somebody is ready for intercourse. And if they are not ready, then of course you have no other choice than to force sex. And of course, forcing sex is very natural. So his thing is like the things that he likes are natural and the things that he doesn't like are not natural. And so whenever you go to my uh, parody videos in the comment section. Everyone's always like making fun of them by saying hiring hitmen is completely unnatural. Trying to have a Molotov cocktail burn your son alive is totally unnatural. <laughs> you know, so everyone always comments that ha how unnatural this, that, or the other is. So that's like the on running joke, you know, that, oh, it's extremely unnatural, of course to try and hire hitmen. <laughs> so everything's all about nature with that guy. Yeah. Of course, hair systems are very unnatural, and you would have to be a mentally ill slave in order to glue a wig to your head. I, of course, naturally regrew my hair after being bald, and one of the ways I was able to reverse my hair growth, I rejuvenated the hair follicles, was by rubbing goat's testicle puree on my head. I pureed the goat's testicle into a fine mush, and then I rub it on my scalp at least 37 to 48 times a day, maybe more. And then, of course, after several months, it begins to rejuvenate the hair follicles. And then, of course, the hair grows back natural and stronger than before. And then he's got these, like, simp scribers, I call them, who come over and try and, like, uh, and troll me. You're obsessed with Godus. You need to get a life. Why are you so obsessed with him? It's like, dude, I have a parody channel where I make money exposing him. And it feels good to expose shitbags. For the same reason why those uh, scammer videos where the scammers get exposed, the same reason those get millions of views. Because people like saying shitbags get what's coming to them. And so the only people who try and defend them will come over to my parody channel and try and make me out to be the bad guy. You're a bad guy for bullying Gotis. So it's like, oh yeah, I'm the bad guy for exposing the guy who hired Hitman to attack his girlfriend and his infant son. Sure, yeah. 
Let's let's talk about how much of a bad guy I am for exposing this. So yeah, that's the only thing I have to deal with over on the parody channel is his slave scribers trying to come over and and tell me that I'm a bad guy for being so obsessed with Gotis. Isn't that funny, Jonah? Isn't that one hell of a story? Isn't that one hell of a twisted tale? So this guy's currently wanted right now. And so uh, the more eyeballs on this, the more people who know, the better. And eventually when he slips up and gets caught, that's going to be a glorious day. We all look forward to that. So uh, currently he's still on the loose, held up in God knows where. And uh, like I said, if any of you guys think you're going to go over there and say anything to him, he's got his finger on the ban button and none of your comments will make it through. The only comments that make it through are the ones worshiping him. <clears throat> yeah, he's got a, uh, a mod who calls himself a Prussian society, something like that. Prussian something. And uh, he basically just kisses his ass in every video in the comments section. And those are the only type of comments that'll stand, is if he kisses his ass. If you just simply say, hey, are you wearing a hairpiece? You're banned. Are those things that they say about Luna true? You're banned. <laughs> you can't even ask the question. Yes, Prussian Society of America, his, uh, his personal butt buddy. And then another thing that his subscribers will say is, he saved my life. I was a vegan and I almost died. And he taught me how to eat meat and saved my life. And I'm like, okay, so that means he gets to beat women and scam his audience forever until the end of time and pay to have an infant torched, his own innocent son. And since he taught you how to eat meat, you're just going to be okay with that? So his subscribers will use the excuse that since he ate raw meat and helped turn their health around, they're going to look the other way while he hires hitmen to kill his own innocent son. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him think. All right, well, this video is going to get, you know, five to 10,000 views, somewhere in that range when it's all said and done. And so a shitload of new people are going to now know about the saga of Spearage, the tale of Gotis, Gatis, whatever you want to call him. <clears throat> and so uh, if you guys ever hear the news that he's apprehended, then you'll know that the story has come to its final conclusion. But we're expecting uh, probably some more uh, drama before then. Who knows? All right, guys. Uh, I've been on here almost three hours talking about this shit bag, and that was all I had planned tonight. And I got through that, so now I'm done with it. Now I'm hungry. I'm going to go eat. Who knows? Maybe I'll eat some raw meat. <laughs> all right, guys. So until next time, this is Jake the Asshole. Uh, also. Uh, signing off live from the Spheerage Gotis Parody Videos channel. And you guys all have a wonderful night, and I will see you next time. Peace.